Okay, I'm Dr. Elizabeth De Castro. I'm from the Philippines. I'm a professor of psychology at the University of the Philippines, but also the director of Psychosocial Support and Children's Rights Resource Center, which is an NGO working for children and child rights in the Philippines. Uh, it's a long story, but to start with, I am a victim myself. I was a victim of torture and violence in my younger age. I mean, not, not under 18, but uh, 21, 22, because of the martial law and Marcos regime for which I was incarcerated and tortured. Mm -hmm. And as a result of which, I met women, children, and other people in the incarceration camps. And when I came out of that, I thought I might do some work in this area and went on to do my master's and PhD in the area of children and eventually ended up doing work in children's rights. Well, I am in this symposium because I was very interested uh, with a new work and new approaches, and I saw I saw a lot of the of the papers that were going to be presented, or at least I read the titles of it and thought, "Wow, there's really a lot of things that are going on now," uh, and I wanted to be updated. I wanted to learn, but also I wanted to share some of my own experiences, having been in this work for the last 30 years already. A key experience for me has really been uh, being with children in prison and being together with the mothers and working actually to help alleviate a lot of the psychosocial, uh, psychosocial needs that they had, which at that time was not at all known. So from that day on, when we were trying to just sort of uh, um, help mothers and help women uh, manage the stresses that they were encountering in the violent situations that they were in, I thought that the best way was really to be a practitioner in the field. I wasn't a child psychologist yet at that time. And then, of course, for me, uh, the key experience was immersing in communities where I saw all the suffering and a lot of the joys as well of children in the communities where we worked. Uh, and I thought the key experience was really being grounded and immersed in all this. I would say two things. One was actually the community-based approaches, and there are many of them, with a key point of saying that most of them were participatory, most of them were looking at existing resources in the community, and most of them were actually helping them help themselves. I thought the community-based approaches were very important because we are starting points where, where the communities were and helping them to help themselves and help each other. The second one is a much more sort of um, professional uh, training kind of thing, and which was I was just reminded of today by a fellow uh, psychologist who said, what happened to all the child-to-child -child approaches that we have been discussing in, in the past? And I was very much educated in that area of child-to-child -child approaches, understanding, of course, that is, there is child agency. In other words, children can help themselves, even in terms of their psychosocial problems. And I think Right now, I mean, this is not discussed as much as it should be, and we're doing a lot of more sort of macro delivery systems, and I think that's, to me, something that has to be really reconsidered or considered much more. For someone starting this work, I would say go where the action is. In other words, be with the children, be with the communities, be with the people you want to work with. But also, well, that's the first step. In other words, the physical grounding of it. The second step is really a more of an attitude issue. In other words, when you go there, don't go like you're delivering services and don't go like you're giving them benefits. Go there basically with an attitude of listening and trust and respect. And I think when we work in all these areas, we always think we know the answers. But to be honest about it, I've, I've gotten more answers from the community than my entire sort of PhD training in psychology had given me. For policymakers in the field, I would say very much so the same thing that I say to other people who would like to go into this area. Listen, listen, listen.
but also not listen only in terms of give me the figures, give me the numbers, what are the uh, what is the big picture scenario, because I know that's what policymakers want. But I think you will also have the policymakers will also have to look at the more specific areas, like what is it like for a day in the life of a child in a war thorn area, or what is one intervention or one case management method that worked, rather than saying, okay, how can we sort of give this to everybody at one time in the in the quickest response possible. And I think for policymakers as well, it is also good to be grounded.